Next up, we have Paulo Balboa, NDIA's Senior Programs Manager, who will talk more about how local organizations and governments should prepare for upcoming grant opportunities through the Digital Equity Act. Thank you. Good afternoon. How's everyone? <laughs> Woo! Did I miss Gritty? Did Gritty already come? Ah, can someone get Gritty to come back? I wanted a selfie. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, how folks should prepare for digital equity grants um, as we move from the state planning processes into actual grant making. But before we get into that, I'm just curious. This is a huge conference. For how many people is this your first Net Inclusion Conference? Raise your hand. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Welcome. Welcome to Net Inclusion. Uh, let me figure out how to move the slides. Um, I was on a panel this morning, and the icebreaker question was my coworker, Pamela, uh, asking each of the panelists, when was your first Net Inclusion, and where? And I felt like an old timer. My first net inclusion was in 2018 in Cleveland, and there were only a few hundred people there, but the content remains super spiriting and super encouraging. So for you who, you who raised your hand, if this is your first net inclusion conference, I hope that you find your people and your community, because that's how I felt back in Cleveland in 2018. All right, does this work? Okay, we can go back. Uh, so for, for folks who don't know, uh, NDIA's work is steeped in ground-up innovation and community-oriented solutions. That spirit is very much alive in the programs that we develop and the policies that we cement at all levels of government. So I'm here today to talk about preparing for digital equity grants, but I want to do some table setting real, real quick. Um, if you've been with us long enough, then you've definitely seen this slide before, but it's worth repeating because now I want to emphasize, again, we're moving from the state uh, planning grants phase into the capacity grant phase, so listen up. In 2021, the federal government made the biggest ever investment in digital equity in the form of $2.75 billion with a B dollars in the Digital Equity Act. Woo! <laughs> uh, and later this year, two grant programs will open up. First is the capacity grant from states, which is, which is going to be $1.44 billion. And the second is the competitive grant in which folks will apply directly to NTIA for $1.25 billion. So how did we get here? Over the past year and a half, states and territories have been going through a, through a rigorous planning process to write their digital equity plans. They've taken a page out of NDIA's book to learn from their communities and to create plans that address digital inequities in order to build strong digital inclusion ecosystems. The next step for the Digital Equity Act is moving beyond state, the state and territory level. They'll soon be making grants. So, audience participation again. Raise your hand if you're here with a local or regional government. Okay, keep your hand raised. Raise your hand if you are with a community anchor institution like a school, university, or a library. Cool. Uh, raise your hand if you're with a community-based organization. Most people in this room. And then finally, raise your hand if you address the digital equity needs of folks in your community at a local level. <laughs> Most of this room. So, everyone who raised your hand, you will more than likely be eligible to apply for grants, uh, for the uh, capacity and competitive grants. When? We don't know yet but hopefully very, very soon when the NOFOs come out. So, like, I wish I had more information. I was kind of hoping that it would have dropped today and I could present that, but we don't know yet. So, full disclosure, you know, but keep an eye out for the, for the notice of funding opportunities, the NOFOs. Then you'll be able to apply for grants, uh, for funding to create programs in the form of capacity grant from states uh, and competitive grants directly from NTIA. For capacity grants, each state or territory will receive a specific amount of money to implement their digital equity plans. The competitive grants uh, from NTIA will likely be similar to other federal grants and how they're administered, but more to come on that uh, a little bit later. While you're preparing for two very different processes, there are some common things that you can do now to prepare for both of them. So here's what you need to know. 
One, be data informed. Your state or territory has already done the legwork of gathering data to figure out barriers to digital equity, and it's identified organizations and programs in an asset inventory for you to reference in your proposals. Two, use your state or territory's digital equity plan to inform your project proposal. The plans include elements that will be key for you to reference, including spe specific covered populations and implementation strategies. Three, build partnerships and define everyone's role clearly so that they can see how they fit into the overall plan or project. And four, create measurable and sustainable goals. Make sure that you have clear outcomes to point to when you share out the successes from your programs. This is important in the short term for evaluation, but also we're thinking in the long term for sustainability of the digital inclusion ecosystem. So I just want to take like five to seven minutes more and dig into each of these elements a little bit more deeply. First, uh, I mentioned that your state or territory has already gotten a head start on data collection. They've done this through the planning process this past year when they identified barriers to digital equity for priority populations through a needs assessment and they developed that asset inventory which identifies organizations like yours, all of you who raised your hands, uh, who are doing the digital inclusion work. But I want to dig into one of those uh, data collection elements a little bit more. That's asset mapping. We love asset mapping at NDIA. We love it so, so much. Someone's nodding their head. <laughs> um, so as we're, right, we're moving from the planning phase into implementation. The, the time for action is now. It's up to you to connect with partner organizations locally and start learning about existing programs. Your state's asset inventory is a great place to start, but we, NDIA, are going to recommend that you do asset mapping and that you do a needs assessment locally so that you can get a more granular assessment of what the digital equity ecosystem looks like. So go a little bit deeper. If you need help finding partners or if you've never heard of asset mapping until now and you're like, what is this thing? Why is this guy talking to me? Well, shameless plug for NDIA, we developed an asset mapping toolkit. It contains a survey template. It contains a spreadsheet template. It's free on our website. I encourage you to go and check it out. Me and Aaron co-wrote it, so you're just going to see more of my writing on the page. Extra plug for that. Uh, and also, of course, our website hosts our affiliate page, where you can, it's a uh, which includes a searchable directory where you can find partners locally. Second, as we move from the planning phase into the grant making phase of the Digital Equity Act, use your state or territory's plan as a guiding document, but don't be afraid to color outside of the lines when designing your proposal. The programs that you deliver should reflect the specific gaps and assets of your community while still being informed by your state's plan. So as you read through your state or territory's plan, think about how the unique needs and characteristics of your community should be reflected in your project. Remember that you, more than likely, will have some local knowledge that the state probably missed in its initial survey. There are things that we know about our community just by existing in it, just by talking with our neighbors and learning about their daily lives. So remember that and use that knowledge to your advantage. States and territories have also laid out implementation strategies in their plans. Your organizations and the projects that you develop will be the vehicle for that. So make sure that your proposals not only reference but also deliver on what's described in the plan. But we can't do this work alone, as I'm sure folks in this room are acutely aware, especially people who have been doing this work for some time. So what is going to be the key to success? Partnerships. We're NDIA. We love partners. We like partners so much that we get 1,300 or so in a room once a year and get you all to talk to each other. Right? That's what we do best, so we're going to espouse the value of partnerships as much as we can. I don't doubt that you already have a decent idea of who does what and what programs already exist in your hometown. But what about organizations that have never heard of the phrase digital equity? Was that you two or three years ago? Right? Considering how, how quickly this community has grown in the past few years, the digital equity tent still has a lot of room to grow and that means more partners, more people at the table. As you gather partners, You'll want to think through how you can highlight the strengths from each partner organization, which is going to be key to getting buy-in. For instance, ask yourself questions like, 
who has the who has the space to host regular meetings? Who has direct service programs? Shining a light on these partner assets early on and giving a clear direction will help you develop strong strategies in the short term, but also give your programs a shot at long-term sustainability. So think of places like the faith-based institution in your neighborhood that also does computer classes. The teen center that helps parents sign up for benefits. Consider partnering with community anchor institutions like your schools, your, your universities, and your libraries, which along with having a broad network, might also have uh, data sets that provide additional insight into digital equity needs. And I had to name drop libraries because for folks who know me, I come from the library world, so shout out libraries. Work with your libraries if you aren't already. They're valuable resources. And I would say that libraries might be an example of an organization that are like, they're doing the digital equity work, but they've just never heard of the phrase. So there may be some education involved, but pull them in early, uh, as early as possible. As you work with partners, Keep your eye on a few things. Barriers, who's already doing what, what programs already exist, and what the state has described in its plan, and your project, and your project scope should come into clearer focus. For instance, is there a certain population that faces significant barriers to digital literacy? Or is there a certain neighborhood where adoption rates are significantly lower despite having access? Build on your ecosystem strengths. And don't reinvent the wheel if you don't have to. You're going to hear that phrase a lot over the next few days. So as I mentioned before, defining clear roles and responsibilities for folks, uh, for folks you're working with helps create buy-in. So some more questions to keep in mind, like who can host? Who sets the agenda? Who has the administrative capacity to oversee the project? Also, who's bringing snacks? What snacks will be present? Should I bring Kit Kats? Should I bring Werther's Originals? Is this a hard candy crowd? Right? These are, these are important questions to consider. Speaking of food, uh, for Philly folks, uh, if there's anywhere that I should get Scrapple that, that I should check out. I heard a groan. Is that bad? No. <laughs> or pork rolls or Taylor ham, unless that's a Jersey thing. Anyway. Uh, at NDIA, we've seen this over and over again, that engaging your partners and giving them clear direction helps to get people to keep showing up. So instead of a monthly meeting where you kind of, sort of, don't know what just happened, each organization sees their critical role in the overall project. And fourth, make sure that your, plans have a, make sure that your strategies have a plan to collect data and that your impact is measurable, whether that's 300 devices distributed over several months, or 1,000 recorded digital navigator interactions, or 3,000 repeated recorded digital navigator interactions, or even longer term outcomes like X number of jobs found as a result of your program. These are things to keep in mind. Being able to measure your success is important to understanding the impact you're having, and it's also important to improving service delivery in real time. These are all great things, of course, and it just so happens that the NTIA and or your state or territory will want to see these things listed when they assess your project. So it's killing two birds with one stone. Looking into the future, these same measures are also exciting to potential new, fun new partners and funders of your work beyond the capacity and competitive grants. The time to be thinking about measuring success is not when you're finishing the work and sending in uh, your final report. It's right now. It's right now before the work actually begins and you're imagining your projects. So at this point, your plan should be in good shape, but I wanted to wrap up with a few more practical tips, especially around uh, applying for federal grants. Uh, this is your reminder that, cap that the capacity and competitive grants are an enormous undertaking. You're gonna hear that from us a lot. So just, they're big, they're important, but they're gonna be an uh, enormous undertaking. So keep that in mind. There will be a lot of moving parts, especially outside of the direct project delivery. So some administrative things to prep for. Start gathering and organizing your 424 forms, which are standard for all federal grants, before the NOFO comes out. You can find a list of these forms on grants.gov, uh, and it includes documents such as a work plan, a budget, uh, and other things, so you can start collecting those documents now before you begin the fun part of planning out the specifics of your project. Unless your idea of fun is collecting work plans and budgets, in which case, more power to you. That's pretty awesome. Um, 
Extra pro tip, and folks who are familiar with federal grants already know this, get your unique entry ID from sam.gov. Uh, and just a note, sub-awardees will, will also be responsible for setting up uh, unique entry IDs as well, just in case your proposal involves sub-grantees. Finally, no matter if you're here representing a small nonprofit or if you're a member of a larger city or regional government, start telling your colleagues about the capacity and competitive grants. If you're at this conference, then you more than likely are going to be on the team or, you can, or you're going to be the person in your workplace who is interacting with ongoing and future digital equity projects. So do yourself a favor and tell your colleagues about this so that they'll know what's going on if you go missing for a few days writing evaluations or attending cool conferences with 1,300 or so of your new friends in Philadelphia. At the administrative level, get board approval. And if you're with local government, this might look a little bit different, but spiritually pretty similar. So something like a council resolution, budget approval, or something else. The more people that you tell, the more everyone will start to think that you're very, well, that you're very important and you're, that you're super well connected, because the truth is you actually are, right? This work, is, this work is super important, and we are very well connected at our conference. We're all in this together. So, wrapping up, I know that that's a lot of information, but the good news is, is that for the next few days, you're with 1,300 or so of the top minds around digital equity that you can listen to, learn from, and connect with. You also have Team NDIA. We're all wearing the same uh, pretty cool teal shirt today, so come find us, ask us questions, uh, you know, pick our brains. We're always happy to meet new people and uh, bring, bring, new bring new faces into the community. For my part, uh, I might go missing a little bit because I will be tracking Gritty down and getting my selfie, no matter what. That's going to happen. <laughs> but what should you do now? Make friends and meet people here at the conference. I hope that you find your people and your community like I did in Cleveland in 2018. But also, read up and study on your state or territory's digital equity plan. Start finding partners and learning about programs locally. And start telling your coworkers, your colleagues, your board, your community about the next big step that we'll be taking to close the digital divide together. Thank you.